this computer. Okay, I'm going to call this meeting of the Arundel Planning Board to order. It is now seven something. Seven oh nine. Seven oh nine. And we are meeting in Zoom. We have before us a number of items on the agenda, so please bear with us. This may take a little while. Uh, we have approval of the agenda. On the agenda, we have the approval of minutes from March 12th and March 5th. We have public hearings, Gary's Auto Salvage, a conditional use permit renewal. Item number two is BDF Holdings, a minor subdivision application. We then have pending applications of Gary's Auto Salvage and BDF Holdings Incorporated, Terrapin Landscape, uh, Determination of Completeness, Smart Transportation, a major conditional use application, Determination of Completeness, Where's Buick GMC Service Expansion, a plenary site plan, pre-application. We have two new applications. We have Old Logging Road Timber Harvest, which is a major conditional use application, determination of completeness, and Run Two's Run Dog Daycare, major conditional use application, determina determination of completeness. And when we get all done with that, we can all go home. So I need I need well, to the business too. <laughs> I need to get a motion to approve the agenda. I'll make a motion. We approve the agenda. We'll second that. I'll second that. Okay. Motion has been made and seconded to approve the agenda. All those in favor? Any discussion first? Oh, we have Steve in here twice now. Okay. Hearing no discussion on the agenda. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? It is unanimous. Let's take a look at the meetings of March 5th. Okay. We have three out of the five people that were here that day. Yeah, I wasn't here that for that meeting. Marty, myself, and Jens. I would suggest that we table that at this point because uh, you know, right, right now we've, we, we don't even have a quorum to vote on it. So I'm going to move that to March 5th, unless Susan joins. It's like we have the same, uh, same issue with the, the next set of meetings too, Rich. I'm sorry. Looks like we have the same issue with the next set of minutes for the 12th as well. Yeah, okay. Then we will table both of these. If Susan successfully gets on, we'll handle those at the end of the meeting. The first item uh, is a public hearing. Gary's Auto Salvage, a conditional use permit renewal for an existing auto salvage yard on a portion of a 16.5 acre site located at, 25, at 258 River Road, tax map 40, lot three in the R4 district. Gary Welch is the owner and applicant. Uh, Gary informed us that he would not be able to join us uh, today, but since, this was, since we've done the site walk and we're doing the public hearing on this, and here comes Susan. Yay. Oh no, I'm so sorry. Yay. That's quite okay. Okay. Yeah, since Gary said that he wouldn't be able to join us today, he, do, he does not have the technological capacity to do so. So at, at this point, I um, unless any of the planning board have objections, I think we could just, we can just move him down to the pending applications and deal with it when, when he gets there. Okie doke. Everybody else okay with that? Yeah, that sounds good. Yep. Okay. The next I'm item is sorry. BDF Holding, which is a minor subdivision, a proposal to subdivide a 31.5 acre parcel tax map for lot 23 at 715 Alfred Road in the AR district into four lots. Subdivide the existing 5,000 square foot building 
on a proposed lot two into an additional four units and make improvements to the existing heavy hammer lane to bring it into conformance with the town commercial driveway standards. BDF holding is the owner and applicant. Is there anybody from the public that wants to speak to that? Hearing none and seeing nobody's hands raised, I will close that public hearing uh, at 714 and we will move right into the business at hand. The first of which is Gary Zotto salvage. Since Mr. Welch was not able to join us uh, through this wonderful miracle of technology, and this is just a conditional use renewal one that we have renewed for quite a long time. We went out, we did the site walk, didn't see any problem. I want to know the board's feeling on giving Mr. Welch the permit and just vote that, that it is acceptable. I, I move that we vote that it, it is acceptable. I'll second that. Okay, a motion has been made and seconded to grant the permit to Gary's Auto Salvage. Through the chair. Do we have the uh, findings of fact on that, Ted? I do, yeah, and you all received a copy of the findings of fact. Do, we, do you want does, me to read it or do we just all look at it? And, well, does, does everybody have a copy? Uh, I think reading it would, would uh, put us all to sleep sitting here. Absolutely. Put me to sleep. <clears throat> I, 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 yes, I mean, you all have a copy of the findings of fact. It's we do, your, yeah. It's on your digital packets. Yeah, so. right. And Unless there were any changes on it, it's basically the same as it was before, just a change of date. So you folks didn't do yeah. anything different out there, and, and there's no reason to concern yourself with the uh, everything was exactly as it's shown on the map. And so yeah. the question is... I'll move that we... we um, Skip reading it and just we have the text in front of us. If anybody needs a copy, we can send it to them. But I, I'd say we just move forward. Is it I'll, second, I'll second that motion. Well, we we now have two motions on the floor. So we, oh, was it, I didn't hear the other one. Oh, Susan m made a motion that we uh, grant the permit. Oh, I thought. I'm, but, I'm, but I think you. I think you're right. So I'm going to rule. Susan's at this point is out of order because we have to decide, we have to vote on your motion to waive uh, the reading of the findings of fact. Okay, I, I misheard the original motion. Yeah. No, that, that's quite okay. Does anybody have a problem with the motion to waive uh, the readings of finding of fact? Okay, hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Marty, if you're, you're in favor, put your hand up. All right, good. It is unanimous. <laughs> now back to Susan's original motion. Do you want to repeat it, Susan? Yes, I move that we approve uh, the renewal of the permit for a BDF hold. Is is it BDF Holdings? Nope, it's Gary. No, it's for Gary. Okay, for Gary's order. Don't get Ben excited. Sorry about that. Okay, I need a second on that. I'll second, I'll second that. that. Motion's been made and seconded to grant. The renewal for renewal permit for Gary's Auto Salvage. Any discussion? Oh. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. It is unanimous. Yay. Next, BDF Holdings, a major subdivision application. Okay. Does anybody have any questions for the applicant? And I should look at the town planner and ask the town planner if he has any information that he would like to share with us. Well, I was just wondering, unfortunately, since I was sick at the time of the March 12th meeting, I'm not really sure what happened. I just read the minutes and they were a little, um, they weren't very complete, but I, I just had some questions. Um, I, I noticed in the minutes and mentioned something about the, the tree line and, um, there, there are fourth. There are three things that, that you have to do uh, according to the requirements for the minor subdivision, and that was 
The easement description for a heavy hammer lane, describing it as a private driveway in lot one, in which lots one and two enjoy access and share maintenance responsibility. Um, it's, it's designated as with meets and bounds as if it's a private way, and so we, we need that clarified. The second thing was the applicant, um, uh, it's supposed to show where there's forest cover on lots two, three, and four, um, and where they're supposed to be any removed as it's developed to convert it to lawn or any other cover. And the other one, which is 7-2-D-28 D was, uh, the applicant was required to submit a narrative of logging operations that occurred along with the forest or certification of timber harvesting complies with Maine Forest Service timber harvesting standards. Um, I think I, 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 that was in the notes I, I did back in, well, back in March. Uh, and then there was only the concern about um, the fire chief's letter. You guys want me to a fire chief's letter about that why hammerhead premise at the end, whether he accepted that and the curve uh, in heavy hammer laying. And um, the board, so I, I, I don't have a letter from the fire chief. That's the only thing that I, I have to say. And um, I think the only other thing was, uh, See, um, stormwater, stormwater, it looked like that there's gonna be no stormwater improvements, no way of handling the stormwater from the road or, or the improvements on that road in the future. And that, those were my questions. Do you want to address those, Paul? Um, well, real quickly, I, the four bullets, I believe I wrote an easement description and, and Ben gave that to you at the last meeting, I believe. It wasn't um, here. That it was is described in me. Oh, okay. But so I believe that, right? he did, and he addressed hammer, the hammerhead, uh, the turning radius on the hammerhead at the last meeting as well. The chief, and chief did? I'm yeah. sorry, I don't have a, a copy of that. Paul, can you give me a copy of that? No, we don't have a copy. I think Ben met with him personally. Um, I did run the, uh, uh, the, the turnaround is not the Y. The Y is the access to lot three. The turnaround okay. is going to be used, the existing driveway accessing lot two. That will take care of a fire truck turning around. We're adding 85 feet to the road because of that, so the truck can pull up the, into the 85 foot section and then back up into the driveway of lot two, and that's going to act as his turnaround. And I believe the chief said he'd be okay with that. Yeah, and we discussed all of these matters at the last meeting, and I, I brought the easement um, letter from the timber harvester and we talked about the curve um, and we are going to get that in writing from the fire chief. He just hasn't responded to emails yet. We've talked in person a bunch of times, but um, okay. I, the, uh, the board was seeming pretty, pretty happy with all those discussions we had at the last meeting. Okay. Um, yeah. If I could get copies of that, I didn't have any copies of that. So I'm, I apologize for that. Um, I I've got the whole packet that I brought to the meeting and I gave it to everyone that was at the meeting and I'll, I'll swing one by your office and drop it okay. off without. Okay. Uh, the only, uh, then the other question would be, uh, what about, what's the drainage, Paul? Are you, are you going to make it per lot? Every lot's going to be responsible for their own drainage? That's correct at this time. Cause we have, you know, obviously no idea as to what's going to be constructed what size right. buildings we construct, how much parking lot we're going to have. So yeah, they're going to have to, uh, deal with their own on lot stormwater. Fortunately, lot three is a pretty good sized lot. Uh, it does yeah. have some good topographic drop off so that the tension point can be put on lot three. Fairly simple. And obviously, lot four is the remaining land and they have all kinds of potential to do their own stormwater. Okay. Um, so we're just going to add 85 feet of road at this point. Um, and just so we can accommodate the fire truck turnaround. Okay, all right. And so, um, questions so, had with so where's the drainage on lot? So lot four is going to take care of its own drainage. Yeah, we have uh, correct. And the I drainage, drainage easement. I have a drain drainage easement on lot four. That drainage easement will be able to be available to lot three, uh, should they want to use it. Um, and then, but I would think lot three is going to have their own stormwater pond closer to uh, the stream because it drops off pretty good in that area. Still yeah, maintaining a good setback and still able to put a stormwater pond on lot three. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
So all we need is that fire chief to approve this thing, you know, for, uh, in a written letter. That's it, right? Yes. If the board's, uh, th those are my comments. I don't know what the board wants to do with that then. Does the board have any comments for the applicant? No, I think we discussed this uh, in detail at the last meeting. I think, you know, provided Tad gets the letter he needs from the fire chief, um it seemed like uh everything all the ducks were in their proper rows was that your impression rich i i don't remember the, uh, the i had i had the packet with me uh and i don't have any of the easement information in it so i'm no, not the original the original packet didn't have easement in there that was something that Pat asked for in the uh his march 9th memo and we wrote that easement up and uh ben submitted it at the march uh, 9th meeting or whatever it was yeah that oh, was the 12th it was the 12th uh, march 12th meeting right yeah march 12th meeting that's what he had said but i like again I'm, I'm just looking at the packet that i have and i don't i didn't have a copy of that easement here and this is what I had after the meeting was over. So I mean, I could I could be confused. Yeah, Rich, I don't know if you remember. I walked up um, at the very beginning of the meeting, and I had three pieces of paper, um, and the easement was in that. They were all together, and the easement was in that. But we can. Well, no, I'm I'm just gonna I'm just gonna have to assume that I misplaced it because I, okay. you know, Susan and and I'm assuming Tom Tom has it, Jens has it. So I must have just misplaced it somehow. The, the only concern that I really have with having everybody do their own stormwater uh, study is the cumulative effect of all of that stormwater. If I look, if I look at it and say, well, here's a two acre lot and they're going to put a little bit of water on it. And then there's another two acre lot that they're going to put some water on it. I, I'm just concerned that the cumulative effect of having those three separate lots is going to be more than it, than the the uh, a more negative impact than it would be if it were just one uh, stormwater analysis for one particular piece of property. No, I can understand what you're saying, but you know we would have to make some assumptions that probably would not be valid whatsoever. Um, and again, you know, uh, lot two, we did do a stormwater plan for lot two, the existing building, and it's just driveway and we proved to you that that did not have an impact on the downstream uh, structures <clears throat> and the off-site flows. Uh, lot three, we're talking minimum lot size on these projects at one acre. Lot three is a three, is almost a four acre parcel, has plenty of room for their own stormwater detention. For me to actually try to figure out what's going to be happening on these parcels is virtually impossible and a waste of my client's money. Yeah. Okay. And, and with this subdivision, we, we, we left the lot sizes larger um, and hoping that, you know, future plans and divisions will come along and we set it up the best we can for, for big business kind of to come in. But right now we just have really no idea what's happening. It's a very simple split right now. It just looks like the drainage easement, Paul, is going to be going on to the adjacent property is going to go into lot three. A lousy light here. Lot three. You know, I'm just looking at the drainage easement that's at the end of Heavy Hammer Road. I mean, yep. Heavy Hammer Road. Yep. That goes on the lot three, doesn't it? The drainage easement is on lot four. The drainage, the drainage going from that portion of 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 the of Heavy Hammer Road. Can't see it's in a bit of light. Just looking at the contours. Yeah. Oh no, it's gonna to go towards Pennant's land, isn't it? Correct. It's gonna to head to the east. Yep. It, uh, there's a split there where lot three heads to the stream. Uh, lot yeah. four is a high point, so the majority of it would head towards Pettit, that's correct. Or yeah. the stormwater may be going in the southerly direction and the pond would be at the southerly end of the site. It all depends where the most of the development is. Mm -hmm. 
But the storm water along heavy Hanger Lane, how's that on the on the uh, south side of it? How are you going to disperse that? That's going to go just along the sideline of Heavy Hanger Lane down towards uh, the drainage easement towards Pettis property. That's where that yeah, would go. Is it going to? How's it going to be dispersed? You can put a a spreader there or something? Not right now. Not, no, I'm just adding 80 feet of road, and that uh, we got a culvert under that road right now. And so the water is flowing in the same current location that it is right now. So I'm not proposing anything at this point. Right. That would come for lots future, or lot four and lot three, once they decide to do the infrastructure and pavement and roads and access points, and it would come then. But we're not proposing anything right now. <clears throat> we're talking about adding 80 feet of gravel. Um, and then, of course, you know, we still have that issue of once you get past 15, 15 parking spaces, you're going to have to pave that, that heavy hammer lane, correct? That's correct. Okay. So we'd have to put that in as, as a caveat in, in the, uh, the approval. Because as the planning board will probably remember that we have this thing about commercial driveways and commercial parking lots. That's, we carry more than 15 cars where they have, we have more than 15 parking spaces you have to pave the parking lot, the parking lot and the in the road the driveway so um right now they're below that uh and ben you uh i saw your your submission uh that christy put together for you uh you're dividing that into two units right now your your uh your building building's gonna be two units or are you still going for four so two units. We we have people to fill both units, and and that's exactly what they want right now for square footage. So just the okay. Units. So you're going from four sub a subdivision of four to two, or are you going to make it two that can be broken into four at some day, some point? Um, the building has the ability to be broken into four, um, but for the next foreseeable future, which is ten years, we um, we we just need the two two meters, two two sides, one demising wall. <clears throat> Okay. All right. My my opinion my opinion was to keep it at four, and then the, somebody's going to have the split it in two. Somebody will have two units, and the other person will have two units. Um, unless Ben wants me to modify the plan and just call it unit A, unit B, and then have to come back in front of the board if you want to split it again. I you know I, I don't think you know we're not going to cover a subdivision of the, the interior space. We're just going to uh, our main concern there is the the amount of parking. That's all. Right. Right, right. Yeah, what what's the trip point at which at which he has to pave that that area? That's the that's the only real big concern the planning board has with, oh, with the building. Because somebody's going to trip it at some point. That just pushes everybody over to to pave it. And I know Ben's always considered paving it. It's just he's holding off now until it it has to be paved by the regulations. That's all. So that's correct. That's why I was asking about the two because it seemed that it would have less of a number of parking spaces that would be required as a result. Yeah, I didn't know if I should modify the plan as called unit A, unit B, or just leave it as four separate units. That's up to Ben, I guess. Yeah, I mean, you can get approved. I mean, right now it doesn't matter. It really, actually, it's not the only thing that's relevant is the amount of parking. Correct. Yep. The thing that's relevant. Yep. So, um, actually, Jim Nagel just approved our um, application to to put up our demising wall and get that ready to to do the lease. And our two current leasers. Um, have no desire to have pavement. Everyone's happy the way it is. So I said, well, we'll see what the next person to come on the property is and then figure out pavement then. Okay. Well, I think we'll, we'll continue with the four then. I would agree with Paul. Probably be in your best interest to get an approval for that with it as four and then we'll just keep keep track of how many parking spaces there are out there. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I think as, as long as the the potential uh people coming in realize if they get up over the the requisite is it 15 parking spaces dad it's 15 vehicles it's not even parking spaces okay, it's 15, just, they, yep, they get up over yep. the 15 vehicles and they have to pave it somebody's going to have if if you currently are leasing one of those sites or or you bought one of those sites you're going to have to pave your parking the parking lot i think it's parking spaces not vehicles well, but I, my, it, it, it'll take me a while to find it, but I'm pretty sure it's parking spaces. But, but, but the situation would be the same. I mean, the minute somebody says, okay, we're, we're not going to have 16 parking spaces, everybody has to pave, 
save that area. Uh, correct. I guess if you walk out there at any one time, you see 16 cars out there, then he's triggered pavement. <laughs> right. well, it's, yeah, but it's not I mean, so much you know, a question of, of, of walking out there and seeing yeah, the 16 cars. If we're showing, it's, a, it's 15 parking, yeah. 15 or more parking spaces. Parking spaces. Yeah, it's parking spaces. Yeah. Yeah. It's 15 or more parking spaces, so you, you're going to end up with uh, four sites out there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It'll, it'll get triggered at some point. Yeah, gonna, of course. And that's yes. the point. At some point, it will get triggered, and then everybody is going to have to, to pave their section. And of as course. long as they realize that. Yeah, we'll exactly. Yes, we realize that. Absolutely. I think they realize that. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Does the board have any other questions for the applicant? No. No. Okay. I think the next step, uh, we need to make sure we get a letter from the fire chief. Okay. So if, if, if somebody makes a proposal, that has to be part of the condition. Mm -hmm. Did we lose Susan? Oh, no, this is Susan. Okay. Oh, no, I'm here. Okay. Well, you were down in the lower left-hand corner and Linda Zook was in the upper right, and now you're in different places on my screen. So I don't know what's going on. They play. So are we, have we uh, decided if the uh, application is complete yet? Is that? Yes, you did. Okay, so so we're ready just to um, approve it. With with yeah, I don't have a fi I don't have a findings and facts written for this because I I wasn't sure where you guys were on this thing, so yeah. I, I didn't. Well, write one. well, we still need to wait for the uh, fire chief. I'm not sure what's holding him up, but but we really when we. So when we left the last meeting, they um, said we have that letter for final approval. And I didn't think final was this meeting. I thought it would be one meeting after okay. this. So um, yeah, I'll, yeah, I'll chase it down. And, and okay. focus on more. I'll get the findings all squared away, ready to go. Okay, so we have time for that. Okay. Yep. Yeah, we can do that. Enough. All right. Well, excellent. So I'm a little bit behind here because I wasn't in the last meeting. So the project did receive preliminary plan approval and we're going to be going for it's final. A, it's, it's, a mi it's a minor poll. Oh, okay. We've, since you got rid of that lot, that additional lot, what used to be the. Um, okay. Uh, so it's a minor. Know, the daycare lot. Since you got rid of that, it's, and, and you don't have any real road. This yep. road isn't a road. It's a right. driveway. Right okay. Now. So it's right down it to minor. It's down into minor. That's okay, why. Good. That's why. Okay. Okay. Perfect. So we're set to go at the next meeting. So all we need is a letter from the fire chief and he's ready to okay. go for final approval. Yep. Thank yep. you, gentlemen and ladies. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you. Good time, Paul. Thanks, Ben. Thank Stay you. well. Thanks. 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 Smoother. <laughs> okay, on to uh, the next one. Terrapin Landscape. Uh, plenary site plan application determination of completeness. Right. And you've got oh, okay. Mike Corsi and Steve Dell here. Yeah. Oh, is Steve gone? No, Steve's no, still Steve. here. Steve's there twice. But he's I muted know right. Okay. I can't get him to unmute. Steve, you need to unmute your mic. That's the problem. <clears throat> Lower left hand corner. Oh, he might not be able to hear us when he's muted. We know sign language. Well, I, I can't see better? anybody else want to wait. There, you go. Go. there he is. Okay. Better? Yeah. So we did we did a site walk a week ago. Yeah. Any comments from the board about the what we found out there? No, no. All look good. The uh, the land was mostly high and dry, except for the, the few spots that you weren't really going to uh, impact at all, at all. So staying out of the wetlands. There was plenty of um, screening, a lot of great hemlock trees along Sam's Road. So I think those are some of the things that we were looking for, and they look good. I agree. I, I thought everything looked pretty good out there. There was one question 
that came, that uh, came up about the water and whether or not uh, it was anything that to be concerned about. But from what I understand, talking with Tad, no, that's fine. Uh, it's not going to impact well, anything. Yeah, the wetlands weren't were not a regulatory wetland, so um, that, that was pretty clear from the field. So um, I felt comfortable about the proximity to, of the driveway or the uh, parking lot to that. Uh, the only thing that I noted was I'm a little concerned about the the lack of buffer along the north property line or along the northern side of that of that parking lot because it's a little thin there along that trail, and. Uh, um, although that uh, the what's her name uh, the Hopkins property is not developed yet they, they've got some project ideas in the hopper right now I've been talking to them of, and they might be sensitive to that, that parking lot um, so I'm not sure exactly how you'd want to handle that Steve um, the northern boundary uh, we might need to do some filling in there of, you know with either vegetation or some fencing to make sure that that they screened, not not buffer, but screened because it is commercial. Um, make sure that it's screened from their land. And I guess I didn't have a real good. I I kind of got the feeling of where it was along that side, but I was a little concerned about the density along that side. I thought Sam's road was fine, looked good, and I also reviewed the uh, stormwater and I'm going to withdraw the request to have that perfect uh, have that peer reviewed because I think it's uh, it's actually more than adequate. So, Ted, wasn't the uh, lay of the land kind of sloping upward as you move toward the uh, north lay of butter? Uh, it's it's actually it's undulating land through that that section right there. Yeah, uh, it, it's you know it's undulating. That's the best I can come up with. It does it does drop a little bit, but. Um, you know, this is always the problem when you have a piece of property that's that's in a natural state, you know, against another area that's natural. And, um, well, it's not natural. It's pretty clear in that area. But, uh, yeah, that was my only concern, really, in that section. question I would have, when the, assuming the abutter develops theirs, do they have to provide buffer requirements as well? Because currently they, they have, they have yeah, not. Yeah, oh, I'm sorry, Steve. Yeah, if they have a parking lot there, they, yeah, they, they have to, uh, they have to buffer it too. I have to buffer it from you. Okay. So yeah, it would apply to both parties. It's it's a buffering not of the project, it's a buffering of the parking lot. And that's okay. the requirement in that district, that's all. But I think it's actually a screening because these are these would be two commercial uses, because what they're looking at is commercial use at all as well. So it would be more of a screening than it would be a, a buffering, which is a you know, is is a blockage. This would be a screening. So Otherwise, it looked pretty good to me. Was there a question about noise, getting a noise study? Yeah, we, not so much a noise study, but but uh, uh, something that would give us the the decibel ratings uh, at the property line, so that we don't run into the same problems we've had uh, with other contractor yards. So, so what Mike has done, Mike, um, he's only going to have one piece of equipment operating over there. And he got some decibel readings of that piece of machinery, like right next to the machine. And then he went to the uh, property line. And at the property line, he's getting about, and correct me if I'm wrong, Mike, about 56, something like that, decibel readings at the property line. And I believe the standard in that zone is 60. Yeah, I was yeah. actually, I was actually I at 100 bottom. feet from the machine uh, was 50.1 decibels. Okay. Uh, and yeah, I think I, it's 65 since that's a business zone, Mike. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, you know, the other thing, the important thing to point out is that that machine is not going to be running all day long. It would only right. be running when a truck comes back to the yard to get loaded with some material. So you're talking about, you know, maybe a 10 minute intervals here and there, not, not, a, not a consistent uh, noise all day. Yeah, I mean, yeah, we're aware of that. Um, well, if you can get me that information, and um, that that'd be great. Um, if you could submit that stuff to us, that would be great because we 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 would need that because we ran 
uh, there was a court case over this, so we're rather sensitive to it. Um, we want to make sure you guys don't get uh, in, in, uh, in, in the same vice. So if you can give us that evidence, we would greatly appreciate that. In written form, we can put it in the file. All right. And then I, I realized that we're okay. very close to, to hydrants because there's, there's two of them in the area. But do we still need a, le a letter from the fire chief uh, <sighs> saying that he's, he's satisfied with uh, the project's compliance to the land use ordinance? Yeah, it sounds like I've got to talk to the chief tomorrow and see if I can get him to write two letters because we need that one for, uh, we know um, that there's adequate, they're within adequate distance in the 5-7. We just need, you know, uh, section 5-7. We just need to uh, get a letter from him. That's it. So, okay. so I would say, you know, you know, pending, pending the receipt of that, of that, that information, this application is complete. And I would recommend to the board that, that you might deem it complete with the submission of this and schedule a public hearing. I'll make a motion on that, that we uh, deem it complete with that one um, thing from the um, fire chief that and, needs to be. And the noise ordinance. And, and the okay. noise. And addressing a little bit of beefing on the uh, the buffering too, or the uh, the north side screening. Does the board agree with that or not? Well, I I don't know I, I don't know if we really need that um, north side. I mean on the um, what's her name? Um, Hopkins. Yeah. The Hopkins property. Yeah. Do we? Do we? It's all. Um, natural and wooded is completely uh, no neighbors yet there well yeah um i would just remind the board that you did that to motorland though yeah okay well we gave them the option they could they, they have got the option of putting the landscaping and, and tearing up that portion of the land or putting it on a fence and they opted for the fence all right, so I'll include they bought the property next door. <laughs> so. that, uh, is that something that we can have a look at once the actual clearing is done and see what's left for for a buffer? Well, that that would be something the planning board could. I mean, that would be that could be a proposal you could pr present to the planning board. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'd, I'd be amenable to that as long as we can meet the, the it's screening standards, not buffering, correct? It's screening standards. Yeah. Yeah, as long as we can meet the screening standards, then then I would be fine with it. I'm fine with that as well. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Right. All so right. That's motion then. No motion. second it. Okay. A motion has been made and seconded. The application complete, pending a couple of more items that need to be dropped off. Uh, any any discussion? No, I think the one thing that, that we need to be clear on, we should not schedule a public hearing until that information is has been delivered. Yeah. And then once it's delivered, we can schedule the public hearing because we want well, to be able to go straight straight afterward and, and issue the right. we, all possible. Those are conditions of, uh, of being complete. We can't really move forward without it being complete. Okay, that works for me. Through the chair, yeah. um, I could, I, I could. I only need seven days at advertisement of that. So if these guys get got it to me next week, and I could get a advertisement by let's say Wednesday into the paper, would that be all right? Or do you want to review that um, before you make a, a call for a public hearing? I think that would be fine. How does the rest of the board feel? I'm That's fine with that as well. Yeah, yeah, that would work. Okay. Yeah, get get the information to Tad, and then he can schedule the public hearing. Okay. Okay. Yep. Okay. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Thank you. Oh, uh, point of order: Have we voted on that? No, you didn't vote on that. No, we did not. So. Oh. Thank you. Oh, we we need to. We've got a motion on the floor to deem deem the application complete, pending the delivery of the information to the town planner who will then schedule a public hearing. Any discussion? No. Nope. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? It is unanimous. Okay. Now we're done. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen.
Thank you. All right. Have a good evening. You also. Hey. Next item on the list, smart transportation, conditional use application determination of completeness, uh, proposal to operate a 32 vehicle livery transport business within the existing Arundel self storage facility. And you should all have some information from Tad on that. John is on. I'm here, yep. Yep, oh, John's here, okay. okay. And Susan, if you're getting coffee, you have to share with the rest of us. Oh, no, I didn't. I just, every, <laughs> I won't even tell you. I went to get uh, hand cream because everything is just so dry, even though it's been raining. So I thought I just put stuff on my hands while I was listening to you guys. Okay. Okay. So we, you have before you a list of quite a few things that we are being asked to wait to have waived. Right, and I think a lot of those things, the gentleman that came on behalf of the applicant um, thought that all those things had pretty much been hammered out uh, with Tad, and Tad wasn't at the meeting, so we didn't know, and Tad's notes weren't clear. So, Tad, maybe you can shed some light on. Uh, I gave you those notes. I think I sent those notes all to you, as you're uh, dealing with every single one of those issues. Should be in the notes that you received. Yeah. I looked at that. I was trying to, trying to remember everything that we discussed at the meeting because there were quite a few line items. Um, well, I think I addressed every single one of them after the public hearing, after the uh, site walk. Should be in the notes that you received in, in your right. electronic packet. Right. And the second. Um, There. Yeah, I think it was dated what April something. Hold on. April second. Yeah, April I think the thirty first. No, March thirty first. Yeah, the March thirty first okay. one. Yeah. Yeah, I. Well, I guess we can go down that list. I, um, John asked for a waiver on the property boundary survey, and um, I know I found uh, some issues out there that were. Uh, made me a little concerned about where the building was gonna be. Um, what I did do, and I, I think I documented in that 31st, March 31st uh, um, notes was that I found, John, I found your neighbor's survey. Um, I don't know, can anybody, well, that's no help whatsoever, but it's, uh, it was done by a Lower Village Survey. It was done uh, on December 20th, 2019, so it's very recent. And it shows uh, what Jens had suspected and what uh, Mr. Butterworth had, had suggested, and that is the, uh, that the, uh, the right-of-way there is much shorter than it is farther down. It actually starts pinching down uh, and, and skewing way to the west. But um, I think that we've, what I felt fairly comfortable, um, especially since there's an iron pin that was set uh, on DMR Drive, that that uh, right of way probably is about 12 to 14 feet, hard to say, you know, 12 is a 60, 60 scale map, but about 12 feet off the edge of pavement. Um, so that would mean that a 50 foot setback from that would put it about in the middle of that parking lot. It is, um, let's see. Oh, what is it? It's about, uh, let's see, what did I have? I said it looks like it's uh, about 16 feet west of the building line of that first storage unit that used to be the, the house or the, the living unit. So um, you would you need to be able to, to set where that setback is uh, for, for us to know exactly where that building is going to go. And that I think we need a little more detail on that. So you could either take a chance on that or maybe get Lower Village Survey to show you exactly where that 50-foot line is. But it's, it's chewing up a lot of that parking lot. And, and it's, um, it's just shy. It's just a few feet shy of that building line. So if you can establish that on a, on a better plan than a 60 scale, 
uh, I've, I'm not sure the planning board would need a, a full survey. Do, do you have the survey that we submitted? Yeah, yeah, I do. But, um, that was oh. a, I don't have a registered survey from you. I have what your LA pulled, pulled out. But I, um, I've got, this is actually a, a registered survey and it was done this in December. Right, and we and used that same survey from Lower Village. But we did. Everything was set on there. Okay. I believe in the top left, I don't have the survey printed in front of me, but I believe in the top left it indicates that that's from um, Lower, Lower Village survey. Yep, and it does in fact show that. Yep. So I think having found Lower Village surveys um, product there, I, I I think we can we uh, we don't have to waive it. They provided that that piece of information. So the property boundary survey has been provided, and I feel comfortable about that ha having looked at the the original Lower Village survey too. Um, and then the uh, the scale on that, I think uh, we talked about that. Uh, and that's a 60 scale. Is the planning board well okay with that? Usually it's supposed to be 40. The planning board would have to give a 60, uh, have, a, have to waive it uh, from 60 to 40. Is that all right? That would be a waiver. We would, I would recommend that. Yeah. Existing right. setback lines are provided. Yeah. Um, I didn't find any easements or, or uh, rights of way that conflicted on that property. The topo survey, Obviously, that's not needed except for what's going to happen in the paved area, um, because uh, one of the things we're going to discuss is is the issue of the drainage, and I think that was really the only thing in my list. I went down the whole list here: location of drainage facilities. There aren't really any site on-site soils. This is urban land over a wetland. It's fill and wetlands. Site distances. Um, again, we got a site distance that's on the survey on the on the uh, actual DMR drive, and it's it's 2,700 feet to the north, about 800 feet to the south, and it's the same next door. So, it, it meets the 500 feet uh, minimum standard in both directions. Even though there's going to be increased traffic, there's more than adequate site distance. Fire suppressions. I I asked the chief for a letter. I don't have that yet, but I think there's a hydrant pretty close. Um, as I recall, um, it's near DMR. There's also, um, let's see, outdoor lighting plan. The applicant's not going to need a, a lighting plan because he's not proposing any lighting. Landscaping, the only thing there is, since there are some, there's gonna be a new building in there and he needs to put in the two street trees and that's about it. No signs, on-site soil investigation. The only thing is that we're gonna need an LSE to, uh, vet, um, to verify that the septic system is still functioning. Um, probably want to talk to the code enforcement officer about that. And the only other th real issue there I think that staff had was the, and I think Jamie raised it at the staff review meeting was the, excuse me, at the uh, site walk, was um, the fact that that, that, that uh, wetland is in fact a regulated shoreland zone. Uh, it's on the maps and the concern there is um, how we deal with drainage because right now it's it's draining towards that wetland and we have some unstable bank in that location and it seems to be eroding away whether or not that was pushed there by snow plows but we're losing the fence and some of the bank there and that is a regulated wetland um, and so I think we need to have some sort of stormwater management plan on how water gets into that wetland from the parking lot. My, uh, my my guy said uh, Scott Striner, the guy that did all, did the planning, said that he would he would suggest we create a planted level lip spreader to slow the flow of water, control the release of runoff and stream through the wooded area. Um, we know that that'll take a chapter three hundred five permit by rule um, for work adjacent to a protected natural resource. Yeah, I mean, you're going to have to get a DEP permit for that. Yeah, but this is also our, and you're also going to have to show that to us because this is one of our regulated shoreland zones. And it, you're supposed to have a, this is, I would call that a wooded wetland in there. And I would call that, you need a 50 foot setback, but you have an existing, you have existing fill in that setback and it has to, and the planning board has to decide what they, 
what they want to do with that because you're not really changing much you're intensifying the use but they would need to see well, how you're going to handle stormwater going from that parking lot into the uh into the wetland so if your guy's going to do a if he's going to do a permit by rule then we should get a copy of that and we, we need to take a look at that as well okay okay all right Let's see anything else i think i went down the list so come on stuff together for some reason okay so we what we uh what we have what staff recommends it's up to you you folks but staff recommends waive the boundary survey Waive the site plan drawn to 60 scale. Uh, existing and proposed setbacks are provided. Uh, there are no e exist waive the existing um, rights of way and easements. Uh, topographic survey will be only related to how he's going to handle stormwater drainage from the um, from the uh, parking lot. Location of on-site streams and wetlands. Your your uh, your engineer or whoever's doing that is going to have to locate that that uh, boundary of that uh, wetland anyways as part of his um, his permit application so you'll need to do that and show that on, on the permit application of the plan uh, I recommend um, waiving the location of trees exceeding eight inches drainage twills and tree lines and floodplain first of all there is no hundred year floodplain um, and location of existing utilities um, I don't think there's any digging that's going to be going around there and you're not putting in any other uh, utilities. Let's see, identification, waving, location of drainage facilities. There aren't any really except for culvert. Um, but you'll need to show us where you're gonna, how you're going to handle that runoff from that parking lot. Identification of on-site soils. Uh, we already know what that is, so I'd wave that. It's fill on, on wetlands. Site distance, I'd waive that, or or say that the that it, it has adequate site distance. Uh, we need that letter from the chief on fire suppression. Uh, we'll need a detailed sheet of that'll be part of the uh, uh, the drainage stuff. So that that will be included in that. So um, the detail sheet will be part of the stormwater plan, outdoor lighting plan. Waive that landscape plan. Yeah, you got to put in two trees. Um, in accordance with 595 and 6654. Um, let's see, no signs, so that will sign that that can be waived. On site soil investigation, we will need the code enforcement will need this too. We'll need just uh, an LSC to take a look at that septic system and determine that it will meet the need of the use and that it still works. And then that stormwater, the way you're going to handle stormwater coming up, that, that one we need. So the other ones you can waive. Um, and on the yeah. list that would, yes. As you were going through listing them, <clears throat> I want to make sure I have the ones that you're you're saying we should get. They would be number yeah. five, number six. Five, I wouldn't know. I wouldn't say five for the whole site because this is only affecting this where they're where they're going to be discharging the the stormwater from the uh, from the parking lot. Okay. So, so I would say six. Six, twelve. Um, so far, six, twelve, thirteen. Um, uh, that that that'll come with uh, the stormwater management plan. So we don't need thirteen. No. Um, fifteen. Yep. Yeah. Seventeen and eighteen. Okay. So those okay. those are the ones that that we're going to have to require. You feel comfortable waiving all of the other ones? Absolutely. Does the board have any questions? No. Okay, then we need a motion to waive everything except the half dozen items that Tad has pointed out. Yeah, I'll, I'll make that motion. I'll need help on which one. So motion um, that, what are we, uh, deeming this 
complete. Gonna, we're going to waive everything except for. Wave, okay, waive. I'm sorry, waive everything except for um, five, which is around the, the wetlands area only. And is it um, site distance? That number 11, did I skip one? We're, we're going to waive everything except number six, number 12, number okay. 15, number 17, and number 18. Okay. On the list what, that Dad sent out to us. All right. Was um, on there the site distance? Um, are we all set on that one? Yeah, we're all set on that one. We're going to okay. wait. Okay. I feel pretty comfortable about that. I don't think they have to get an engineer to do that. That's a pretty uh, yeah, it's, it's already a been done. long stretch. Okay. A long stretch. It's already been done. Uh, um, Leon already did that. Um, okay. For drive, which is just a couple feet away. So. Right. Okay. So that's my motion. So we need a second. Second. Who seconded that? Roger. I did. Roger? Jens. Yeah. Yes. 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 Jens, I'm sorry, Jens. Okay. Any discussion? Okay, can I, this is John. Can yeah, I John. give um, an actual description of what number 6, 12, 15, 17, and 18 are? Yeah. Number six is the location of on site streams, wetlands, and water bodies according to the okay. Shirley zoning map. Shirley right. map. Is, is it something you just uh, email over to me, Tad? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. yeah. I don't need. I don't need to have it right I'll, I'll do that tomorrow. I'll do, do yeah. that tomorrow. For you. Okay. Perfect. Any other questions, comments? Hearing none. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? It is. It is approved unanimous. Okay. I will get that to you tomorrow, John. Thank you, Ted. And you All get, right. uh, if your, uh, if your uh, engineer wants to talk to me about, you know, how we can approach, you know, some of the, uh, some of the stuff, I'll be happy to talk to him. Okay. So I just want to make sure I'm clear since I haven't done this process before. Yeah. Does, are we going to have a public hearing on the 26th or are we going to have another discussion on the 26th? Uh, it's up to the board. Oh, okay. We're going to the board. Well, we need to determine the application complete. So at this point, we can't do that. Okay. Can it be done? Can it be pending complete, pending those uh, things getting to tab with seven days prior to the uh, the next meeting? I, I don't. Uh, that's again. That's up to the board. We did it for the last applicant. How do you guys feel about doing it now? I think what's fair for one is fair for the other, so I think I'm all right with that. I am too, as long as this stuff gets to Tad in time. Right. I agree. Was that you, Yen, saying you agree? That's correct. I agree. Thank you. Marty's waving his hand. I assume that means you agree, Marty. I haven't heard from Marty. Yes, I do as well. Okay. Yeah. okay. All right. Then we we need to uh, determination of complete completeness pending delivery of all of the information to Tad, and then he can post for a public hearing. Somebody, anybody? I'll make that motion. Then move it along. So this what you said. So we'll deem it complete with that um, condition. Okay. I second. Motion's been made and seconded for the termination of completeness pending the receipt of all of the information requested. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? It is unanimous. Thank you very much, John. Thank you, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Appreciate your time. Okay. See you next time. Next up, Linda, un unmute yourself. Okay, let's hope everybody's quiet in the background. Let's go preach, Mom. Okay, Marty. <laughs> Just throw them all out, Linda. I know. They're all home. 
This is a plenary site plan pre-application of proposal to construct uh, 2,500 square foot expansion. We did the site walk last week. We went out, we looked at it. Uh, there were a couple of items, not the least of which involves our getting a complete application. Okay, what were the couple of items? Uh, a full plenary site plan application, including stormwater management, topo contours. You're not relocating. Are you relocating any of the parking out there? We're eliminating some of the parking. We're, but we're not relocating. Okay. okay. I'm sorry, what? The DEP stormwater application. I'm going to let Paul take over for that. Right. Yeah. He, he said he's going to, once he submits it, he'll get the application. The, notification to us that he has submitted it that's correct but we don't have it yet no those, those were the few items that we were looking for i think you know i was hoping we go through the application checklist real quick to make sure that uh, we're not going to get surprised at anything you might want to have um it's all pretty basic um i'm kind of just limiting my project to the project limits where we're just with the exposed buildings going I'm not going out back to the furthest buildings and trying to locate outdoor storage, outdoor storage facilities required by the ordinance. It says I should show outdoor storage, it's inventory outdoor storage. So I'm hoping that won't be necessary because I'm just fine tuning my project just where the addition is and just how I treat the runoff for the addition. So I know the checklist says show wetlands in the entire property. No. I'm kind of narrowing it down just to the wetlands adjacent to my activities so hopefully the planning board's okay with that um, obviously we're going to do a traffic study you know we're adding i think Linda said we're adding four bays or four internal working stations which in, in the long run is going to add about two employees to this project uh, so i'm assuming we can get that would be applicable for a traffic study so i just kind of want to make sure when i submit the application I'm not leaving something else the board might want to see. Uh, again, outdoor storage, there is some outdoor storage way back. Uh, I think they store some uh, plows in a fenced area. You know, you can't see it from <laughs> any place on the site, really. So I'm not going to show that. I'm limiting my scale just to the previous area and the buildings. Um, so uh, uh, real quickly, um, you know, we're not doing any studies and impact studies, studies and all those type of things. I don't think we need to with a commercial project. No traffic, no groundwater. Um, stormwater calculations. I'm not really going to do any pre post stormwater. I'm just going to submit this as DEP for stormwater quality. Um, we're going to treat the new roof and treat about uh, four, 40 feet of the old existing roof. When that gutter comes down, or uh, you saw the gutters coming down under the pavement, we're going to grab that to discharge a new roof, that's going to discharge to our French drain. So we're actually going to treat not only the new building, but a portion of the existing building. Um, so I'm hoping you can answer these questions. Yep. With the chair? Yes, so, Dad. Well, I think, the, um, yeah, I, I, I would agree with all that. Uh, if you, are you going to have any end treatment for the uh, discharge? I don't know what the velocity of the water is going to be coming out of that. that Oh yeah, yeah. We're gonna have you know it's it's obviously you know it's a large storage volume for the runoff of the roof, and it's gonna be discharged to a four inch or a six inch pipe. We will have some sort of a, a, a rip wrap at that at, at that outlet. Yes. Yeah, energy dissipation there Correct. at that outlet. We're not filling any wetlands. Proposed filling wetlands for the project. Um, you know, we're not. We're just we just want to. We want to avoid. Obviously, we want to avoid uh, scour in that location. So yes, we're definitely gonna discharge it to some sort of pretty mitigation in there. Yeah. Okay. Um, I, I am. I drew it at a 50 scale. You don't have it in front of you, or maybe you do have. Um, so no. I, the 40 scale doesn't quite get the entire paved area, which I want to kind of show. Um, All right. I, you know, I think it's 50 scale works fine for me to show yeah. the whole site. I'd have to do another plan with 100 scale, which I don't really know if that's. Gonna work. No. So I don't. I think we're going to focus pretty much on the location of the impact. That's that's where we should do, Paul. It's a big complex. Yeah, okay, good. Good, good, good. Yeah. 
Um, Would the board agree with that? I mean, it's not like that. This is a complete remake of the whole site. Yeah, yeah that's, that's fine. Yeah. yeah, and I think as far as lighting, um, the old spotlights around the building those aren't being used. Uh, it's just the new lights that were added to the building. So we're going to take those lights and just move them forward, and we will give you the cut sheets. Those are the same lights that were uh, uh, designed by uh, uh, JL Lighting or JM Lighting. So Jim we'll, Stock. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll provide those cut sheets. It's very minimal lighting that we're going to have on the building. Okay. Sounds good. Linda, do you have any questions? No. Uh, so you know exactly what we need for the application? I, well, it's pretty much all filled out. The next thing I do is submit the DEP so I can have a receipt that I submitted the application. Then we'll submit it to the town. Uh, and when's the next submission deadline? Ted? I know we're off by a week here, so I'm not sure when that is. I should know that by um get it to me in a week okay so okay thank you okay thank All you right. so uh will there be um the next planning board meeting is that that's the full application would we have to yeah. set the um what do you call that Public uh, huh well, we have to look at it first huh. i mean the planning board's got to determine if it's complete at that at the next meeting and then there's a public hearing. Then they do the. Then they set a public hearing after that. Yeah. All right. That'll put the that'll put the determination of completeness down on the twenty third. Yeah. If they can get it to me a week, technically, yeah. Yeah. If you can get it, if you can get it to Tad before next Thursday, Paul, yeah. then we, can, we can get it on the agenda for the twenty third. I will do my best for sure. Yeah. Okay. And then, right. then it will be, be a public hearing after that. Yeah. Yes. And then it can be all done at that point. Yep. Yeah. Okay. As long as it's as beautiful as Paul always makes it. How's that? Yeah. <laughs> well, the urgency is suddenly gone. Oh, but good. still. <laughs> good. <laughs> but I thought auto repair was an ex was uh, an essential service. Uh, auto repair is an essential service. That doesn't mean it didn't drop off by like 70%. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> wow. Yeah. Yeah. No. We wouldn't go from going being three weeks out to, to scheduling for the week. So. Yeah. That's, that's so. like my business. The huh? IRS extended this out to July. So nobody wants to file a tax return now. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, if, if people aren't allowed to be out on the streets, it's kind of hard for them to go get their oil changed. So, but anyway. All right, gentlemen and ladies, I'm going to sign off. Thank All right, you very much. All right, thank you. Stay safe. You. See, ya. See ya. Bye. 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 <laughs> Next item. Run to his run. Wait, no, it's not. No, oh, it's logging. It's old logging road. It, yeah, it is. It is old logging road. There it is. Is oh, David on or is uh, Kitty on? Who's who's on? I'm right here. Rakaya's right next to me. Look, oh, okay, Kaya's right next to me. Okay, good. All right, Mr. Chairman, take it away. The applicants okay. are here. Determination of completeness. We have an application before us. He wants to cut. Uh, between four and five acres of land uh, in, in order to, to create pasture for horses. Uh, I think the first thing we have to do is the site walk to go out and take a look at this so that we can see what it is that we're looking at, where it is, uh, what kind of an impact it will have on the neighborhood. And this is in the R1 district. Right. We're not looking to have an equestrian ranch out here. We're just looking to put a pony and a horse in the backyard. So. Okay. And David, were you thinking about some other animals, right? You're going to do some subsistence farming, or just just have the horses? Potentially, but I mean, right now it's just the horses. So if that's the case, then we'll we'll do this again. It was literally just to bring horses home. Okay. 
we're, we're, we're stabling two horses in New Hampshire right now, and it's kind of a long drive, so. I think I think at this point we need we just need to schedule a site walk so that we can walk out, take a look at it, make sure that it it's going to fit in with everything else. Um, just having uh, a couple of horses should not put him over the five thousand pound limit. No, no they're each a thousand pounds. <coughs> yeah, we've already discussed this. Uh, the applicant knows the limitations of uh, animal husbandry in the district to five thousand pounds. They just would like to do a clear cut and they have to get a planning board approval to get a clear cut. Right. So they can make pasture, which is, frankly speaking is part of the agricultural heritage of Arundel. Right. So. There's a branch right across the street, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, can we do a site walk um, before the next meeting at six o'clock? Yeah, sure. I, don't see, I don't see why not. Yeah. That would be next Thursday. Well, technically, I hate to be a bugaboo, but we have a shelter in place order in the state, and that means no non essential meetings or outings. And I think we should adhere to that. What, specific, to what specifics would you, would you be looking for on a site walk? This, basically, we looked at it to see how close you are to the neighbors, what. Kind, uh, what kind of clearing you're going in this case you're, you're clearing 75 percent of the property right yeah so we need to make sure that where are you uh, butting up against the neighbors you know, are you going to clear it right up to the property line no we were planning on i don't know if you do you have the application in front of you Yes, they do. All right, so we were planning on leaving a, a buffer zone on the around the property. We weren't going to clear cut all the way up to the property lines. We were going to leave maybe 20 feet. I think it was going to be around 30. We were going to try to leave yeah. 30. 30. 35. Yeah, so the, the, on the, there's two borders of the property, The uh, and I don't know what orientation you have. I can show you on the map here. So yeah. um, the rear border and this whole side, um, I think even all the way out to here, but, but yeah, this is this is all wooded on the ones we got the wrong side here. It's kind of hard to tell. Yeah, so this whole side is wooded, and so is the rear. There's nothing there at all. And then we've got some. Uh, the closest approach would be a. Uh, I think there's a home right around here on the back side. And there's nothing else touching the rear. And then we do have some neighbors on this side here that, yeah, if you needed to see, I'm not sure where the structures are. But we were planning on leaving th about 35 feet. Yeah, it's not going to be all the way around. We're, we're not going to be unreasonable and, and require our neighbors to to see through the trees just for show. That wouldn't be fair. So. How do you want to handle that planning board? What staff do take photos and circulate them? I'll do the site walk and circulate them. That's not a bad idea. Let me know when you do it, Tad. I'll join you. You'll be eight feet away from me when you do. Yeah, I I think on a uh, uh, eight uh, nine eight eight is it eight or nine on a seven acre parcel? I think we can maintain space in. <clears throat> but that isn't the order. I hate to say it, and I don't. I mean, I'm not going to attend. The shelter in place order says no non essential meetings or gatherings period, unless you need to go to the market, doctor, or something else. I think we should adhere to what the governor has asked us to do. Would it I really be possible do. for me to walk back there with a measuring tape and a uh, video capable phone and do like a virtual tour for you guys? Or is that not? I'm, I'm fine with that. Okay. But I really, you know, she was very specific. And this thing is very serious. And I think we need to follow the guidelines, period. Well, if that's the case, then I, when I, I, I'll, I'll tell you honestly, Susan, I'm, I'm considered an essential worker. Yeah, like, well, yeah. Then you should go. <laughs> yeah. Yep. And that's why I volunteered because I because uh, you know we try to keep the the uh, we do have an essential function to try to keep things still running. Um, 
you know, and, and this is in the right. ability of people to be able to use their property or do things on their property, I think is part of that. But um, I think you also, excuse me for having this discussion during where, you know, uh, discussing this permit, but as you rightly, I think, said that we're one of the few, if only planning boards that are continuing to operate remotely, let alone do site walks. I really think it is in violation of what the letter and the spirit is of what the governor has asked us to do. And it's the same as people walking on the beaches, uh, even though there's an order not to walk there, I think we should comply with what we've been asked to do. I, you know, if you guys want to go, then you should go. I can also provide drone footage. I mean, drone footage is fine with me. I mean, visuals are fine with me. I'm happy to meet an extra time, do whatever you ask. But I do think we You don't have to come out. If you want to stay home, by all means. Shelter in place. I think that's what we should do. Okay, they so I called can, it a I lockdown, can, and that's what we're supposed to do. I, I can organize and arrange and provide a a first person perspective view via cell phone if you'd like. I'm not sure what the video quality is going to give you guys, and I can also fly a drone over the property and show you where everything is. I think a drone is fantastic. I think it's better than what we'd ordinarily see. So I'm okay with that. You know. Desperate times call for desperate measures. I think a drone is great. I do. We have to figure out how to get on ground, I'm sorry. I'm I, sorry, David. I think also on ground doesn't hurt because uh, right now the there is no uh, there there is no tree cover unless there's a lot of con conifers on the on the property. Then then we'll have some visual it's, problems from it's from it's a pretty nasty mishmash, honestly. Um, yeah. So I, I can uh, I can give you a. I could probably like put on an orange hat and walk down the property line with the drone over my head, give you the first person and the from the top perspective at the same time. So if you oh, want to see where the lines are, yeah, you want to see where the lines are, we can do that. And um, I can take still photos and send them to you and show where those photos are taken from and pointing to, like you name it, I can make it happen. So <laughs> okay. what is the rest of the plan? Well, I think we should try to, I think he should have the opportunity to make it happen. That would be my feeling. So I appreciate your willingness to do that. Well, I can't argue with that, um, Susan. And, and I, I think, uh, Dave, that, that good suggestion, good, um, I think, good solution. So I think that would be great. OK. Uh, what format would you guys like to receive that information? Would you like uh, a link to a, uh, a Google Drive that has all the video and photo? So I'm fine with that. Or would, you, would you like to do no, it? It's all, it's all new to us. All right. Uh, well, the other option would be to do it something like this live. I'm not sure how I would get the video input into it, but I could potentially add you to a live stream of what's actually happening if you would prefer to like that ask questions. Yeah. Well, I, mean, you, you no, I think the recorder would be better. I, I, okay. I'm not sure everybody could do the live stream. Okay, it's just like clicking a YouTube video and watching it live. That's all. Yeah, I think uh, Google Drive is great. Okay, all right. Okay. Um, yeah, is there any way for you guys to submit to me direct contact information, or do you want me to just, just send it to one person and send it to the town planner, and he can forward it to the rest of us? You got it. Good. Okay. Thanks, David. All right. Was there anything else on the application that you needed assistance with? I don't think so. Okay. No. Right on. Yeah. All right. I'm gonna yeah. sign off then. Thank you. Thank you. Now, next is Kristen. Kristen, are you here? I am here. Hey. Ah, there it is. Okay. I know I had it. Uh, Ronto's run dog daycare major major conditional use application a determination of completeness and again we are faced with the same issue we had on the last participant uh, we need to do a site walk okay this is a site walk that we would not be able to get a drone aerial oh. view of the the facility because right. it's inside because it's what it's indoors right 
Right. Mm. So. <sighs> we could get the applicant to take photos for us, or I could, I, I think the applicant might let me on to take photos so that I can send to the planning board if you would like that. Or the applicant do, we could do it. It's up to you guys how you want to do that. Now, this is why this is why a, a, an actual site walk matters. The last one with you know what's done is what's done. Uh, but this is not really going to be workable, I think, with simply still photos or whatever. I, I understand desperate times call for a desperate measure, but that assumes we we're in desperate times and I run unusual times, but I don't think it's gotten that bad. I think it's important. I, I didn't hear what it's happening. Your audio is really, um, uh, it's uh, cutting out, Jens. Yeah, I, I've had trouble all night long understanding you guys. So the, my audio is not good. I think it's my signal strength. In my location. Yeah. Well, so, I'm, I'm fine if someone wants to come up and do a site walk. I don't have a problem. We only need three for a site walk. So if there are three of us that are going to do that. We only need three for a site walk. So if there are three that are willing to do so, then we should do so. Yeah, I, I agree. I think in, in this case, I think we need to go, we need to be able to see for ourselves. We don't even have to do three. We don't even need three. We, we could do. We'll have to go in digitally because I remember it's kind of a small space. Well, before we do the site walk, uh, and if you guys want to go, that's fine. You, I've already expressed my feelings about that. But were there was there anything else that Kristen should know um, that, or is there? Uh, any other comments or whatever about the application in general that we should share with her? Um, or is it just the site walk that it is yet to be done? Well, in order to determine the application complete, uh, we would need to do the site walk. Is there anything else, Tad, that prevents us from determining the application to be complete? We're going to need something from Casella Waste. Oh, yeah. The letter from Casella Waste should have been in with the application. I, I saw the letter, but I thought the letter was related to the last uh, application and was not current. Kristen, it probably would be helpful to have that letter on letterhead and have it uh, dated. Okay, I'll get another letter from them. Is that acceptable? Yeah, yep. that would help. Is there anything else? Not, yeah. not, not that I know of to determine the, the application complete. Uh, There do appear to be conflicts. Uh, have you have you followed along what the guidelines are for care in animal shelters? Um, 
the, the same guidelines that have been there all along. Yep. I just I just wanted to make to to know whether or not you had reviewed them and made sure everything was referenced properly. Well, as long as nothing's changed, should be the same. Okay. What a couple of questions then. Uh, you've you've indicated that there will be no pans or anything underneath the dogs, so that well, their feces and urine will drop onto the floor. All the crates have pans, every single one of them. Okay, then that, that answers that question. Anything else? What happens if you get an aggressive dog? Well, uh, the last meeting I submitted my release form um, and it says right on the release form, aggressive dogs will not be accepted into daycare and if a dog starts displaying aggressive behavior, um, I ha will have a two strike policy. Um, they display aggressive behavior more than twice, they're asked to leave. Okay, I, I was curious because I, I know you've said that you won't accept an aggressive dog. I was curious as to how you would handle it if you have, if for whatever reason, the owner is less than truthful about the dog and it is aggressive, how, how you would handle that situation. Are you going to isolate the dog in some fashion? Yes. And where would that isolation take place? I have a smaller area inside the larger fenced area for just that type, type of problem. Okay. And what do you do in inclement weather? Well, I did start work on the other side of the garage. Yes, I know it's small and it won't hold the entire amount of dogs, but I do have that area. Um, and I do intend to, I mean, we all let our dogs out in inclement weather to relieve themselves. So they will go out for a few minutes at a time in really awful weather and then be divided up into small groups to play in the smaller indoor area. Right, but you couldn't separate an aggressive dog outside in an enclosed area in inclement weather, indefinitely anyway, or at least during the day. You would have to have some kind of shelter where you could house them until their owners pick them up, correct? Yes. Okay, so where is that? Well, they would either be in, in the indoor area after the other ones left it, or in a crate. I mean, I'm not gonna leave them in a crate all day. I'm not gonna leave them outside all day. You know, just because a dog is aggressive, I'm not gonna be cruel to it. No, no, I wasn't suggesting that. What I'm saying is you said that you would put them in a smaller area outside in your yard. And yeah. I asked you, what do you do in inclement weather? The presumption is if that's where you have to separate them, you can't leave them out there all day long in bad weather. So you'd have to have some other place to put them until their owners pick them up, correct? Yes, that's, that's so, what the, the crates are for. When they're, they're in for their rest periods, they're in a crate. So is it in a crate or in a cage? Well, you tell me what the definition is. Well, a crate is like what the very kennels are that we discussed at the last meeting, and it has enclosed sides with right. ventilation right. in the front and on the sides. The cages you indicated are open on all four sides, and you've attached some kind of, you know, um, a, you, it's not oak tag, but some kind of, you know, barrier, but the cages, they're still basically open on all six sides. Yes. So which one, a crate, I think is actually, the definition of that is like a very kennel. And a cage is like what you're putting the dogs in and attaching the you know makeshift sides to. So does a dog, an aggressive dog go in the crate, a very kennel, or does it go in the, because you're going to have issues, I think. Well, um, um, because I, those cages are really not 
private and doesn't keep an aggressive dog from being aggressive to its neighbor, really. Um, okay, um, I do, I mean, you read ads for crates and both the very kennels and the wire crates come up, okay? Cages, crates, whatever, yes, the wire cage, wire crate. I have two completely separate areas with crates that there is no contact between them. They may be able to see another dog from a distance, but they're completely separate. And does that stop aggression when the dogs can see each other even though they're separate? Um, no, not always. I can, put, I can put a divider if the aggression continues. I can put a barrier so they cannot see another dog. I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I'm just not, asking. I, I know, I know, but it just, it seems like you, that is one of the things that you are always on, that, I, that there's no way that I'm going to be able to keep aggressive dogs from, from being aggressive or fighting. Why would I do that? I mean, there are so many ways the state can close me down. You can close me down. I am going to do the best job that I possibly can with these dogs. I, I'm merely saying, Kristen, there's really no, in your plan, no real way to isolate a dog that you're having real issues with. It, it, does, it doesn't appear uh, to me that you have made provisions to really isolate a dog that's really giving you big time trouble. And if you have a big dog, that can be big trouble. You know that. You you've dealt with dogs enough. Yeah. So how how isolated would you have a dog? How would you isolate a dog? I'd put it in a very count and make sure that all the sides were protected and private. Oh, what would, about what about the grate in the front? Uh, it depends on how you position it and where you put it. Would you I would certainly it? put it in a place where you weren't, didn't have to walk other dogs by it. I mean, I own German Shepherds. I have six of them. So I understand what aggression is about. So, you know, you're going to have a hard time. I'm just, you know, saying that. So that's, it's up to the guys. I mean, I'm only one vote, Kristen. So I can't stop you from doing what you're doing. I'm just merely asking. Well, I, I am saying I do, I do have one major area that it is under the stairs. It is covered by the, the, the stairs going down. It's both sides. The only part that is open is the front, which the front of a very kennel is open also. It's, it's a Right, and you can, right. I totally agree with that. And you can put a towel over yeah. over it or whatever, but it's not as exposed as a crate that's open on six sides. So if I, if I got a couple of very kennels, would that appease you? Uh, it, that's only my opinion. I'm only one member of the board. I'm merely asking you about how practically you really can deal with a, an aggressive dog. I'm not sure you can do it in the kind of caged crates you you have so for especially for big dogs but that's up you know there's all these other board members it's i'm only one vote okay so i need to okay. who could make it next on, on, uh, and ask a question and i'm sorry if this has been already answered and i the audio i had is very poor do I understand correctly now that you're going to use some sort of tray system under the uh, cages? Is that the, right? The wire crates, um, most of them all come with a pan that covers the bottom of the crate to, to catch any waste. And also so the dog doesn't have to stand on the wire. All, all, all the wire crates come with these pans. Wait, so the pan is under the wire, Kristen, not over the wire. Over the wire. No, it's on, I think she said it's, it's on the wire. Yeah. 
the 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 pans I have are over the wire. So the dog stands on the pan. Yes. So if it defecates or urinates on the pan, then it's standing on that? Yes. And so... Other than that, they're standing on the wire. Well, so Kristen, I have another question for you, and this is just, without having running water in the building, how are you going to clean those pans with the dog standing on them if the pans are dirty? I will take the dog out. I have extra crates. I have extra pans. I can put the dog in the exercise area while I'm cleaning the pan. Again, I I know I know you are, you know, have dogs, you're you're a professional, but you just Everything I'm trying to do, you, you have a problem with. Why would they sell the wire crates with the pan to go on top of the wire? I mean, you, you, they talk about the puppy mills all the time with the poor dog standing on wire. Why, why I, I don't know. I've never seen a crate like the ones you're buying that have a pan on top of the wire. It's always been underneath, so the waste can drop through the the openings onto the pan and then the pan can be slipped out, removed and cleaned. But if you have a dog that's standing in the pan that has waste in it, it's kind of a mess. Yes, I, I agree. But, it, but also too, this, this is another thing that, that I am only daycare, okay? I'm not boarding, I'm not doing overnights, okay? How many people have a crate in their house, okay, usually with a bed in it, okay, that the dog only rests in, stays overnight in? How often does the dog leave waste in that crate? I don't know. I, I don't want to tell you what I'm thinking, but it happens. It does <laughs> so, happen. It does so. I'm not saying it doesn't happen, okay? It, yeah, all dogs have accidents, okay? I don't, I don't disagree with that, but it's not every day, not every dog. You know, we all have dogs in our homes, you know, whether they're, whether they're in a, a kennel, crate, whatever you want to call it. You know, do we, do we hose down our house every day? No, we no, don't. but you hose the crate down. <laughs> so listen, Kristen, I'm only okay. raising these questions because you want to run a, a licensed professional facility. And these are legitimate questions for a professional to ask another professional. As I said, I'm only one vote. I know how I feel about some of the arrangements that you've made, but I can't stop you if all the other board members are in concert with one another and feel that the arrangements you made are adequate. I'm just saying to have a pan on top of the grate and have the dog go to the bathroom in it, whether it's sick or has an accident or whatever, and have them stand in it and then have to have you take them out and remove the entire pan and not have water in the building and have it be cold or whatever it is in Maine and trying to find a way to clean it off so that you can put that dog back in its crate. I mean, it just, the logistics of it just sound, you know, nightmarish, <laughs> potentially. So okay, well, I'm, I'm going to put a, an end to this discussion because we can, we can have this discussion at another point. Right now, we have to decide whether or not we're going to do a site walk. But before we do that, Jens had something that he was trying to get an answer to, and I'm not sure if he did. Okay, well, I may have misunderstood because I couldn't understand okay. what he was saying. If you want to repeat his question. Jens, can you repeat what you had to say? 
My question was what whether pins would be in use, and if so, were they going to be on top of the wire or underneath the wire? Now I understand uh, Kristen's answer. My, my question's been answered. I, I think um, discuss both these issues uh, at nauseum, and I think it's time to take the next step. Uh, and my question would be, does that mean we look at the requested waivers and decide uh, uh, which of those are going to be uh, appropriate? I'm, I'm not really, I'm not really sure. It, it, what, is that a, a question for whether the pan should be? It's a question for, uh, for our chairman, Kristen. Okay. Can you repeat the question, Jens? I didn't catch all of it. Sure. I said that I think we had talked about those two issues, the pans, uh, uh, if they were to be used, and if so, how, as well as the arrangements in the event that uh, dogs become aggressive. Yep. I think we discussed those ad nauseum at this point. And My, what we need to do next is to consider the applicants requested uh, items for waiver. Well, no, I think first we have to do a site walk before we look at what what we're being asked to wait be, to waive. We need to see what the facility looks like to determine whether or not it would be appropriate to waive items. So, Tad, do you want to go take pictures? I can do that. Or a video or whatever? I can do both. Okay. I have the technology. I can't run this meeting because I don't see any of you, but I know I can make this phone do a video. And, okay. And if, you can, if you can go and do get pictures, do a video, uh, Post it up to ev so that the rest of us can see it. Yeah. We can then schedule this for uh, the next meeting, which would be on April 23rd. Right. And we could we can discuss it at that point and determine if the application is complete. If there are items that are being that we're being asked to w be waived, we can make that decision at that point. Okay. Sounds good, Kristen. I can assuming the board does that, I can uh, probably arrange something next week f with Kristen to do that. Okay. Okay. Is, is it, that a vote or is, do you need a vote or is that just a general direction from the board? General direction. Yeah. So, that sounds good. Yeah. Kristen, I'll call you yeah. next week. I'm not in tomorrow, but I'll, I'll be in uh, Monday, okay? Okay. All right, so I'll call you and we'll make an arrangement. Okay. Okay, great. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. All right, other business. Oh, Mr. Chairman, you're running this, not me. That's right. That's right. Other business. <laughs> you're the person with the other business, boss. Oh, I, I was waiting for yeah. you. Um, don't forget, we have a, <laughs> I don't know how this is going to work. We have a public hearing next week in which we're going to be going over all the ordinance. Uh, changes. You all have copies of that, I assume, right? I believe so. Okay. You, you so, sent them out to us, so I put them all up in my OneDrive. Right. Right. And I have, I have, uh, I probably have, um, also will have Gary Martin as uh, an application. I don't know if we want to do it first or second um, or after the public hearing. It's all up to you. But here, here's what I'm running against. I have to know what we're going to be posting um, by next week because I have to get a, a deadline of all the questions for the warrant into Simone by Friday. And so that means by the 10th, I've got to do it. So I'm going to write up the stuff, assuming that, that it goes through and then we'll just weed out what we, what you think will, well, you're, you're going to hear the public response or you may not hear any public response because, you know, people may be scared of this format. Um, I, you know, 
I've advertised it and I've, I've set up the meeting, Rich, on mine, which I, I think I'm going to have to make another amendment and say, don't, I think, Rich, you're going to have to schedule a meeting because obviously I don't, with multiple people, I'm, I'm just, I'm, I don't even get video here. So um, you and I will have to probably reschedule, um, you know, exactly uh, the, the exact um, address for this. But um, and that's, um, that's basically what I think we have scheduled for next week. And then we have the 23rd meeting. Okay. I will, okay. I will set up a meeting for public hearings uh, and send it out. And I'll do that tomorrow. So you all should get a notification uh, giving you all of that information to log in. Everybody else, Tad, you can go to the website. Yeah. Actually, you know what? I, I I think I actually have to talk to. Hmm. We might have to have me do it because I advertised it on a certain date. I I, I advertised the uh, the connection, and so I think maybe I might just have to sit in the office where we have better Wi-Fi and do it. I may just have to do it. So forget everything I just said. Okay, <laughs> that'll be fine. Okay, I will make you the uh, the uh, the alternate, and you can and you will run the meeting and mute who you want while I take notes. But I was, I, I'm not pleased with the, the effect, how effective I'm, my internet connection is here. It's very unstable and I can't even see any of you guys. I yeah, it keeps yesterday. coming back saying the bandwidth is dying. Y yours does that too? Yeah. Yeah, I'm getting that too. And I, I haven't seen any of you since this thing began. I, I thought, and we haven't even heard from Marty. Um, so, um, yeah, I, I'm gonna. I'll, I'll try it from um, work uh, because I think we have much better uh, bandwidth there. So okay. uh, that's about all I've got. Um, the only other thing I did have. Oh, Rich and I are gonna have a conversation with um, uh, Con Ed, who wants to put in a solar farm on Ben's property, and um, they. Uh, now suddenly they're in a hurry, um, even though we told them, I think, what was it, back in September uh, to, to get it going. Uh, now they're in a hurry. They want us to get going on that. And I, I don't see us being able to do anything for them before um, for the June meeting. So, but we're, we're going to be starting the negotiations with them on that. Uh, also, I'm going to need you to sign. I don't know how we're going to sign Mylar's. By the way, mm. uh, that's a real that's a real problem. And you know, for Ben to uh, to register or to record his Mylar, he's got to have signatures on there. So we might have to have a weird situation uh, where I'm going to have to go around in a hazmat suit, or you guys are going to have to come one at a time and sign something on the front porch of the town hall. Um, but you know we need signatures on these these um, these mylars for them to be recorded. Um, and again, that's something we're going to have to talk to Leah about to get her input on. And how the hell do we do this? Well, the recorder keep... isn't even open, is it? Really? No, no they're not. They're closed. Everything's Are they closed. Really? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, the courthouse is closed. Everything's closed. <laughs> oh. Well, that ends that question, that problem, doesn't it? <laughs> They're recording online. <laughs> yeah, maybe you can use a DocuSign or an Echo Sign, uh, Tad. Echo Sign, not familiar with it. We don't have that technology. Echo Sign, explain that to me. It's like DocuSign. It's a, it's an Adobe okay. product. Okay, I'll look at it. What's it called? Echo Sign? Better. But echo sign or, or DocuSign. Okay, I'll take a look at it. I don't know if you can do that with plans, though, right? Yeah, I know mylar's. Yeah, it's physical. It's a physical thing. Right, but at least you can have our agreement that we signed it until we can actually physically sign it, given the circumstances. I could well, well we could do that with the findings of fact and so forth. Like they could show that to a bank. Uh, what yeah. I've been doing so far is I've been attesting to uh, the planning board uh, action and then using the minutes 
um, as, uh, as a documentation, you know, sign minutes as verification that my attesting is, is, uh, is not forged, that it actually did happen as, as uh, I attest. So um, that's why I always need these minutes. Oh, that's one thing you guys can do, approve the minutes. Uh, yes, yeah, Susan is here now. We can approve the minutes. So you guys can approve the minutes to the fifth and the uh, twelfth, and, the 12th, and then I can get Corinne, who is I still not delivered. I don't think has she? Oh. No, no. She 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 promised she would tell me, um, but I can get her to sign it as her last act <laughs> before she, you know, drops down into a motherhood all over again. Okay, so let's start with the meeting. Uh, the minutes from March 5th. March 5th. And let's see, Marty was there, Susan was there, I was there, and Jens was there. We've got the four people needed to vote on it. So I move that we approve the minutes of March 5th. <laughs> okay, okay, motion has been made and seconded <laughs> to approve the minutes from March 5th. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Marty waved. Yep, it is unanimous. Of all the people, Roger wasn't there. Roger's gonna- I, I abstain, I wasn't there. I abstain yep. too. Okay, right, Tom yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, I should have, I should have made that, that statement. And then okay. on to- March 12th. March 12th. Yeah. Again, Marty was there, Susan was there, I was there, and Jens was there and Tom and Roger will be abstaining. They were not present. Okay. So I move that we approve the minutes of March 12th as written. Motion has been made and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none, those in favor? Marty's waving. Yep. Aye. Okay, it is uh, four yes and two abstentions. Got it. Okay, so those minutes are approved. Good, now I can get them signed because uh, Jim Mackle has been complaining to me that I'm, I, I'm not putting signed minutes up. Um, so I'll get those signed and now I'll, I'll take care of his concerns. <laughs> okay, anything else that we need to be aware of? Um, I have nothing else on my notes about this. Um, no, no. Uh, just that we're, we're hunkered down. Um, I will be doing a lot of work from, from home um, because I have a remote connection to my uh, phone. I have remote, con well, I can get my messages. I have remote connection to my uh, email and to all my, my computer, my whole computer. So I'm gonna be doing more and more from home. And uh, uh, the town hall is staffed. Uh, the downstairs area is staffed by one person per day. And Beth, Jim, and I are upstairs, and Keith is in his office, and and we just we're shut down. We 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 work from there, but I'm going to start working remotely from now on as much as I can. So, so if you don't don't try to stop by, <laughs> call my cell phone. Don't call don't call work phone if you need to talk to me. Okay. Okay. Stay safe, everybody. Yes. Make a motion we adjourn. Second. Nine o'clock. Nine oh two. Nine oh two. Good job, you guys. Oh, get home early tonight. Yeah. Wow. I know. The first I love time I've these meetings. I, they're not bad. I, I'm glad I'm glad you can you guys see me? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, that's not fair. I don't see a <laughs> single one of you. You'll be all sticking your tongue out at me. All right. Not at so all. all right. So we will see you on uh, next week. All yeah, right. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Chad. Thanks, right. everybody. Bye. Okay. All right. Take care.